the following molds and titration question taken from an ATP Olives paper uh, deals with uh, finding uh, the formula HXA of an acid where you need to figure out how many hydrogen ions they are in the acid where X stands for the number of hydrogen ions. So the question reads that a student was required to determine the value of X in the formula of the acid HXA by titrating an aqueous solution of the uh, acid S with aqueous sodium hydroxide which is T. So you have uh, sodium hydroxide which is called T and the aqueous solution of the acid is S and you're given the concentration uh, of both substances. S is 0 0.045 mole per dm cube aqueous acid formula H HXA where X could be anything. So if for example we take uh, X as one uh, an acid that comes to my mind would be HCl where H is 1. If you think of X being 2 then uh, you can take the example of H2SO4 where X would be equal to 2. There are 2 hydrogen ions. Similarly if X is 3 then there would be 3 hydrogen ions in that particular acid. So for example H3PO4. Now this other part this A is could be any ion. Uh, for example, in HCl, the, the ion is Cl minus 1. In sulfuric acid, the ion is SO4 2 minus. In phosphoric acid, the ion is PO4 3 minus. So it could be any ion uh, where, uh, so the H is variable. It could be, the, you could have one hydrogen ion in the acid, you could have two hydrogen ions in the acid, you could have three hydrogen ions in the acid. So that is what we want to figure out in this question. T, on the other hand, is given as 0 0.08 mole per decimeter cube of aqueous sodium hydroxide. And the first part of the question states that 25 cm cube of tea is uh, transferred into a conical flask. Uh, so that's the first part. Let's sketch that. So here is my conical flask and I'm going to put T 25 cm cube of tea in this conical flask. So there is T in this conical flask, 25 cm cube of tea. And what was T? T was 0 0.08 mole per decimeter cube of aqueous sodium hydroxide. So it was 0 0.08 mole per decimeter cube of NaOH. So that is basically what T is. So I have put T in this conical flask. Uh, so let's show this. This, uh, this flask is now filled with T. And the first part of the question is which piece of apparatus was used for the measurement? Now we need to transfer 25 cm cube of T. Remember the best apparatus for transferring liquids and transferring especially 25 cm cube is a pipette because it only has normal pipettes have only one mark which is the 25 cm cube mark and they're very good for transferring liquids from one, uh, one container to the other con container. After that a few drops of methyl orange indicator were added and he's asking what was the color of the solution in the conical flask. So, so you're adding, adding a few drops of methyl orange. Remember that uh, methyl orange is going to be orange yellow in alkaline conditions. It's NaOH. NaOH is an alkali. So initially this methyl orange would have a yellow or orange yellow color. So let's write yellow over here. Or you can write orange yellow. After that, uh, the question reads that a burette was filled with this, which was run into a conical flask until an end point was reached. So you're you're filling a burette with solution S. So let's sketch that now. So here's my burette over here, and I'm going to fill it with uh, solution S. And what was S? S is mentioned over here. It's 0 0.045 mole per dm cube aqueous acid HXA. So it's the concentration is known, it's 0 0.045 mole per decimeter cube, so that's the concentration. And the formula of the acid is known, HXA, where X is still right now an unknown. And what uh, they're doing is that this uh, burette has acid in it, this uh, flask over here has NaOH, which is an alkali in it. So it's an acid alkali reaction. The acid is going to be uh, added into the conical flask until all the alkali gets neutralized. So you're adding. Um, the acid from the burette uh, until the NOH gets completely neutralized. So uh, the question now reads, what was the color of the solution in the flask when the end point was reached? Now, when the solution is alkaline, when it has NOH in it, methyl orange would show a yellow color. But as soon as you start adding acid, the NOH would get used up. It's going to react with the acid coming from the burette. So as the burette uh, drops of HXA keep on falling into this uh, solution over here, the NOH gets neutralized. 
eventually a time would come which is the end point when all the NOH gets completely used up. So there's no NOH left. So the solution would no longer be alkaline. And if you still keep on adding the acid from the burette, the solution, because there's nothing left in the flask to react, the acid would go in excess and the solution would become acidic. And in acidic conditions, methyl orange gives a red color or an orange red color. So as soon as you see this transition taking place, that would indicate that now you are adding too much acid. So that's when you should stop uh, titration. So the end point would be when the color changes to red. So what was the color of the solution in the flask when the end point was reached? It's going to be red. Now moving to the next part. Uh, now he's saying that three titrations were done and the diagrams below show parts of the burette with the liquid levels at the beginning and end of each titration. So, so three separate titrations are done, three separate uh, experiments are done where this acid is added to the alkali over here and you figure out what volume of acid is being used. Three separate titrations are necessary because the average of different experiments is going to give you more accurate results. So you're going to repeat the same experiment three times to get more accurate and better results. And we are basically interested in what volume of the acid is actually added into the conical flask. So he's given you uh, uh, pictures of the burette uh, in the first titration, in this, for the second titration as well and for the third titration as well. And the amount of acid that's being added would be the difference between the two levels. Initially, the burette was filled to the 0 centimeter cube mark. Once the titration was done, the burette now shows a value of 22.80 centimeter cube. So the amount of acid that's actually going into the conical flask would be the difference between the two values. So for the first titration, they've given, a, they've given us a table as well. We're going to fill the value. The initial titration and the final titration readings would be put into that table. So here's my table. Uh, the final titration uh, reading was 22.80 cm cube and the initial burette reading was uh, 0, 0.00 cm cube. Remember to take burette readings to two decimal places because that's the accuracy of the apparatus. So the volume of acid or S that's being added in the titration is going to be the difference between the two values, which is going to be, for the first case, it's going to be 22.80 centimeter cube. Now looking at the second titration, the initial bureau reading is showing a value of 17.50 cm cube and the final bureau reading is giving a value of 39.70 cm cube. So we're going to add these values to the table as well. So the initial burette reading was 17.50 cm cube and the, uh, the final burette reading was 39.70 cm cube. So if we figure out the difference between the two values, that's the volume of acid that's actually falling into the flask over here. So taking the difference between the two values would give me 22.20 cm cube. So in the second titration, uh, the amount of S that's being added or the acid that's being added into the flask is going to be 22.20 centimeter cube. Now moving to titration 3. If you look at the third titration, the initial bureau re reading shows a value of 8.90 cm cube. The final shows a value of 31.30 cm cube. So let me add uh, those values to the table. The initial bureau reading was uh, 8.90 cm cube. Going back to check uh, the final bureau reading, which was uh, 31.30 cm cube. So that's 31.30 cm cube. So that's your final bureau reading, 31.30 cm cube. And taking the difference, so I'm going to use my calculator to take the difference between the two values. And it's uh, going to be 31.3 minus 8.9. And the value that I'm getting is 22.40 centimeter cube. So that's the amount of S that's added. So I've done three titrations and I've figured out the volume of S that's being added in the three titrations. In the first, it's 22.80. In the second one, it's 22.20. In the third one, it's 22.40. Now I have to tick the best titration results. Remember, the uh, results that are more accurate would be the ones that would be close to each other. This value over here is slightly off compared to the other two values. These two values are more closer together, which basically means that they show more accuracy because if a value is coming very far from the other values, that would indicate that that value is anomalous and there must be something wrong going on in the experiment. So we're not going to pick this value. And these would be our best titration results, the ones that are close to each other. So I have these two values. 
my best iteration results. And now using these results, I need to find the average volume of S that's being added. So I have 22.4 and 22.20. If I take the average of the two values, it's going to be 22.30 cm cube. You add the two values and then you divide by two. So it's going to give you 22.30 centimeter cube. So we've now figured out the volume of S on average that's being added. So I'm going to write that down as well. It's uh, the volume of S that's being added is 22.30 cm cube on average. Now, if you look at the sketch over here, uh, I have solution S and I know the concentration of S and I also know the volume of S. So in the next part, uh, part D, S is we know the concentration of the acid 0.045 mole per dm cube and using your answer to see this previous part 22.30, calculate the number of moles of acid in the average volume of S. So we have the concentration, we also have the volume now. So if you know the concentration of a solution, you know the volume of the solution, you can now pretty much calculate the quantity of moles. Moles for a solution would be concentration multiplied by volume. And the concentration, it's known, it's 0 0.045 mole per decimeter cube. And the volume is 22.30 cm cube. And I'm going to divide that by 1000 so that I can convert that into dm cube. And now using my calculator to solve this, it's going to be 0 0.045 multiplied by 22.3. And the answer would be divided by 1000. And the value that I'm getting rounded to three significant figures is 0 0.001 moles. And I'm going to add this value on my sketch as well. So the amount quantity of S that's being used is 0 0.001 moles of the acid. And I'm going to circle this to highlight this. So that is the amount of the acid that's actually being added from the burette into the conical flask over here. Now moving to the second part, uh, to the E part of the question. The question now uh, says that T is 0 0.08 mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide and you have to calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in 25 cm cube of T. Remember that T was added into this conical flask and you had the volume. You, were add, you added 25 cm cube if you remember correctly. 25 cm cube of T was added and the concentration of T is also known. So again, for a solution, moles is concentration multiplied by volume. So since you know the concentration, which is 0 0.08 mole per decimeter cube, and you also know the volume, which is 25 cm cube using, so we need to convert that into, uh, into dm cube. So we're going to divide that by 1000. So using my calculator, it's going to be 0 0.08 multiplied by 25, and I'm going to divide that by 1000. And the answer is going to be exactly, it's going to be exactly 0 0.002 moles. So we, we can write that over there as well. Uh, the amount of T that's being used is 0 0.002 moles of T that are being used in this reaction. So that's the amount of NaOH in this flask. And if you look at this diagram now, you would notice that 0 0.001 moles of this acid are being added from the top and they're reacting with 0 0.002 moles of NaOH in this flask over here. So in the next part, he's asking, using your answers to D and E, calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that react with one mole of the acid HXA. So we need to find the ratio in which NaOH and HXA react. And according to our previous answers, the NaOH has 0 0.002 moles so it has 0 0.002 moles and the acid has 0 0.001 mole. Now the ratio in which they're reacting, it's pretty obvious that 0 0.001 moles of acid are reacting with 0 0.002 moles. So it's basically, it's pretty obvious that the ratio, if you have one mole of HXA, then you're going to have two moles of NaOH. So the ratio, the amount of moles of NaOH so the number of moles of NaOH that are reacting with one mole of HXA is going to be two because it's pretty clear 0 0.001 moles react with 0 0.002 moles. One mole would react with, according to that ratio, would react with two moles. And in the next part, you now have to figure out using your answers to have deduce the value of X in the formula HXA. And again, like 
um, I told you before, if X is 1, think of HXA as a real asset. If X is 1, think of an asset having 1 H, that's HCL. HCL is the asset that comes to mind. If X is equal to 2, think of an asset that has 2 hydrogens. And the asset that comes to my mind would be H2SO4. So we're going to use some trial and error method. We're going to pick some assets having different values of X. This here has 2 hydrogens, this here has 1 hydrogen. Similarly, if X is 3, uh, an acid comes to my mind which is phosphoric acid where you have three hydrogens so I'm going to do a trial and error method and I know that uh, there's a reaction going on between NaOH and HXA and the ratio in which they, the two are reacting according to our titration is one acid molecule reacts with two moles of NaOH so uh, so I'm going to start off with x is equal to one so let's start with x is equal to one let's assume an acid and the acid that comes to my mind would be HCl so HCl reacting with NaOH, I'm going to make an equation and see whether the ratio is 1 ratio 2 or not. So it's going to produce NaCl plus it's going to produce H2O. And this is a balanced reaction. So if you look at this equation, the equation tells me that one molecule of HCl reacts with exactly one mole of NaOH. So this is not 1 ratio 2. I needed uh, uh, an equation in which one molecule of acid reacts with two molecules of NaOH. So this can't be the correct answer, so let's cut this out. This is wrong. Uh, let's take x is equal to, uh, let's taking x is equal to 2 now, and the acid that comes to my mind, a real acid, is H2SO4. If I make a balanced equation with H2SO4, it reacts with NaOH, and it produces Na2SO4, which is sodium sulfate. Plus, you have water as a product, and if I balance this equation, uh, what you're going to notice is that you need two NaOH because there are two sodiums on this side and there would be two water molecules, four hydrogens, because there are two hydrogens over here, two hydrogens in this molecule, so that's a total of four hydrogens on the left-hand side. Now, if you look at this reaction, you would notice that the ratio of uh, NaOH to H2SO4 is exactly two moles of NaOH react with one mole of H2SO4, which basically means that our acid would probably have two hydrogens hence the value of x should be equal to should be equal to two because only then do i get a balanced equation where the ratio is exactly the one that's matching in our experiment it's two ratio one two NOH reacting with one mole of acid and in this equation two NOH are reacting with one mole of acid so h uh, the amount of h in the acid must be two and x would have a value of um, of two and the next part uh, states H part uh, states that using your answer to GCAP suggests a chemical formula of an F acid represented by HXA. And I've already uh, previously mentioned that we figured out that H was 2. And we actually came up with an example which was H2SO4 in the previous part. Uh, if, you, if I took a real world example of an acid having two hydrogens, that would be H2SO4. And now I need to write an equation for the reaction between the acid suggested in H1 and sodium hydroxide. Now we've already actually done that in the previous part. If you look at the previous part, you would notice that uh, H2SO4 reacting with NaOH, we've already made that equation. So what you just need to do is you need to copy this equation in the last part and give this equation the last part. This is the suggested chemical formula of the acid. Uh, in our case, it's uh, the suggested chemical formula of the acid is H2SO4, which is a diaprotic acid. And the reason we selected that is because reacting that with NaOH gives us a ratio of 1 mole to 2 moles of NaOH.